Hi, I'm Philip Cobal and I will explain today about uh, Immersive Web of Twins. So, who am I? I'm a French uh, engineer from uh, Brittany and uh, I've been involved into open source software for a long time and currently part of the Mozilla Reps program. I've been involved into uh, industry in the past, mostly embedded Linux, and I'm currently available. So you can reach me at uh, pearl.org slash rzr, where you can see a previous uh, presentation or uh, demonstration, and I'm currently available for cooperation or creative jobs. So where are we coming from? I want to speak about some concept from the 50, somebody prototyped a personal uh, theater, so this is uh, the ancestor of virtual reality, also in uh, Haiti, the sci-fi cyberpunk author. Uh, William Gibson mentioned about cyberspace, where people could interact outside reality. And one game changer is a Doom uh, first-person shooter game, which can be installed on a PC and provide a very intense experience. Then a couple of years later, the 3D went online with a virtual uh, reality modeling language and X3D, X3D evolved after the years, but the integration wasn't that smooth because you need to install an extra plugin inside your browser, so there were no major commercial success. Uh, Second Life is a, is a game which was native and not on the web, which uh, was quite interesting because people were able to create content and share them through the game. And then the WebGL uh, API in the browser provided the JavaScript to get accelerated uh, 3D in the browser. So that integration issue has been gone. And we were, there were many devices on the market like mobile phone, which are shipping uh, orientation sensors. So you can put this into a, a cardboard, uh, VR, uh, DIY headset, and you can move the mobile and the orientation sensor will update uh, the camera view. So from this, you can create also augmented reality application like Pokemon Go, which are just uh, 3D content over a 2D uh, stream from the camera. So let's talk about openness of uh, immersive reality. So two major projects is, uh, I want to mention is uh, OpenX. So it's a standard from the Kronos group that want to solve the fragmentation between augmented reality and virtual reality uh, drivers and uh, top level uh, layers for creating a middleware of application. So you have an input supplementation which is uh, Monado from Linux from Collabora which is using uh, open and mounted display. And similarly on the web we have uh, the same uh, high level API to provide abstraction to device or application. <coughs> so the sensor from the six degree of freedom which is indicating the position of the users and uh, the controllers to pick uh, the, or interact uh, with the uh, objects. So in the end, you can create applications that can run on different devices, on different browsers, and Firefox Reality is one of the browsers, which is implementing the WebXR application through the Navigator XR object. So how to get into uh, WebXR application? So if you have a VR headset and it's probably supporting a web browser, if it's not, you can install Firefox Reality, or even on a mobile phone, you can use a card box uh, uh, VR headset, and using the orientation sensor, you can use the 3D content, and it will be move at the same uh, speed you are moving your head. And if you are using this uh, on a regular browser, you can still see the 3D world, but you don't have this immersive uh, feature. But you can emulate uh, the sensor you have on the uh, VR headset using an emulator extension. So that can be also useful for a developer to create a web XR application. You can use a high level framework. So the lowest one is the WebGL for the OpenGL and the JavaScript. Then you have the SynGraph using 3GS, which is based on the WebGL, and A-Frame is based on the 3GS SynGraph, and it provides some custom uh, web component to create a 3D scene, like if you were writing a HTML code using tags. So the Haybox tags, for instance, is just a cube. Another framework is Babylon JS for Microsoft. It's based uh, on uh, WebGL, so you have decent performance also. And I want to speak about the GLTF uh, format, which is specified by Kronos. Also, it's compressing the assets to make them uh, easy uh, publishable on the web. So it's a JPEG for 3D. And uh, you can use uh, this uh, in a JSON structure with compressed uh, geometry. And uh, 
render 3D is supporting uh, 3D GLTF export. So the web as a platform, as we know, is not only flat, it's not only for 2D documents, it can be 3D, and you have some immersive uh, feature, which is uh, the web XR, which is superseding uh, the web VR, and it's dynamic because you can create a script application using JavaScript, and it's script programmable and interoperable with uh, web services. So the web is transversal, you can jump from one world to another, People, different people from different cultures can interact also and you can also ent uh, interact with a connected device. So let's talk about uh, Internet of Things. So what we are talking here is about a connected device that can be used on the Internet. Uh, that's another word for interface for accessing a sensor value or changing some actuator's value. Now the Web of Things is a specification from the W3C uh, working group which is providing uh, some uh, commodities to describe the things and make them uh, accessible on the World Wide Web. Mozilla made an Impromosso supplementation called the Web Things and uh, now let me mention about uh, the digital twin concept. It can be uh, defi defined as a live replica of a physical entity. This means we have a model which is moving at the same time as a real object. Uh, web of Twin experiment is something I made to try to bind uh, the Web of Things to the external reality. So I've been using the Web Things, uh, Web of Things uh, API and the A-Frame framework for the rendering. I made uh, this uh, robot from a couple of uh, motors, so I can control each motor individually. So on this dashboard, I'm changing the angle of the mot servo motors and it's updating in the real world and also in the 3D world. So this robot is made of different robots, so if I'm moving from different angles, the robot will move uh, uh, the claw here and I can change the rot orientation of each part of the robot and at the same time I have this uh, 3D model which is also uh, updated in the background. So both are working at the same time because they are connected to the same uh, WebSync gateway and uh, it's not that smooth because this is just the uh, order of the angle of each motor, so it's not a smooth transition. If I have running on a mobile phone you can uh, see different uh, orientation and you can also use a, <coughs> a VR headset and using uh, the embedded browser you can look at uh, the world like if you were um, viewing it on a flat uh, 2D desktop and you can switch to the immersive web when you can look around the object and uh, see if there is any collision or if this is moving uh, as desired. So let me talk about uh, the WebSync uh, platform. So it's a smartphone software you can uh, use home to control all your device. Uh, all the devices are connected to a gateway and you have total control. There is no third-party cloud involved. Everything is made with privacy by design and you control it, everything from a UI dashboard which is very simple to create a basic automation. And from, it's uh, extensible so you can support uh, new devices or new protocol and there is of 100 uh, community contribution. So everything was possible because it was made on a uh, the simplified version of the Web of Sync description from W3C. Another demonstration using a Web Sync and a VR. So I'm playing with some sensor and I am uh, looking at uh, different shapes and the uh, 3D model is updated at the same time. So you can use a uh, different headset uh, and uh, having this uh, augmented reality a view using the ExoKit uh, from Magic Leap. And also I made uh, another application which is uh, uh, like uh, another view for the gateway. So what we see or this control on the left is a dashboard of Mozilla gateway when I have all different switch controlling different color of uh, what I have on my Raspberry Pi. I have some sensor and so on. And I have this uh, switch which that can control this fan and I made a, another switch uh, here which is uh, also 
using the 3D. This is the same uh, the same uh, dashboard, but in a 3D world. So I have this uh, MQTT smart outlet, and if I connect, if I can press on it, it will toggle on my uh, plasma lamp. So all everything is connected from different perspective, and uh, this is just uh, an immersive uh, dashboard where if you have a, a 3D uh, VR headset you can jump into this uh, virtual dashboard where you can get uh, access to different uh, controls and uh, some monitoring. So here I have this uh, a do like a, a dome where I can look around all my switches and decide to uh, interact uh, with uh, some of them. Another one is using the the camera stream to as a background from the 3D DOM. Let's move on. So how this is possible? So it's pretty simple actually because from a sensor you are I'm providing some web API using the WebSync API and it's providing a real-time web socket or HTTP uh, verbs where I can connect uh, this thing to a gateway and then I can share in a secure way my device uh, to the internet using uh, a web token. Then another Excel application can listen to the update of the actual thing and update uh, the 3D model accordingly. So it works in both directions and you can use this uh, component as an example. So another simple example here, so I made uh, also um, I have the gateway running on the Raspberry Pi and on top of it I have uh, this extra board with uh, some extra sensor like uh, the temperature and I have also um, a, a lamp which is a matrix LED where I can change some properties of my lamp like the message uh, properties which is updating this uh, text uh, scrolling welcome to graphic meetings and uh, my uh, next uh, job is out can I connect uh, this uh, smart uh, light bulb so it doesn't work this way because it's a Bluetooth uh, mesh so I had to write an adapter and connect uh, the adapter to the dashboard then it scans the device I can add the new device and then it appeared uh, like uh, another thing so if I press on this uh, uh, shortcut it will toggle it on and I can change uh, some specific uh, properties like uh, the brightness of the lamp and it will be updated at the same time I can change also the color so I made a 3D uh, application so it's basically uh, a digital twin of uh, my uh, lamp so if I'm changing one of its property it will be updated at the same time so to view this, uh, you can use a, a VR headset, and uh, if you don't have any, you can get this uh, super cheap uh, cardboard where you put your mobile on it, and uh, using the mobile sensor, it will uh, display the right uh, uh, camera. So if you need to switch to VR mode, then you have two different view for each eye, and if you have uh, this uh, extension in the browser, you can also simulate uh, your uh, sensor position. So if I'm getting access to my headset here, I can change the uh, orientation of the headset so the display will be updated uh, like if I was moving around. If you have other device with uh, controllers, you can also trigger some events uh, on the controllers button that can be useful to create an uh, um, interactive application. So now let me share how does it work. So I have a HTML5 here. So if I'm looking at the source code, I imported this A-frame uh, uh, library. This means that I'm able to use custom web component and describe the scene composed of a sphere, which is a light bulb and the cylinder for the bottom, the screw of the light bulb. And here I have the color property where so this is what I'm changing and those two keywords which are WebSync and Properties. So WebSync is this uh, 
Web component and web properties is uh, the binding uh, function to adapt the web things uh, update to the XR uh, view. So on in the update function for different uh, properties of our thing, I can uh, decide to update uh, the color if I'm changing the on property, and I can set it to white when it's on and to gray when it's off. That's fairly easy, and uh, if I want to change the color properties, I, it's, uh, here, it's super easy because the schema are aligned, so if I'm changing the, the color value from the model, it will change, and uh, for the brightness, I'm using the roughness, which is quite similar. So this component is open source, you can have a look at it if you want. Another last demonstration using uh, Mozilla Hubs. So Hubs is a um, meeting platform for where people can join a in a virtual world and have uh, some uh, live chat using uh, WebRTC. So you can talk together using voice, and each uh, user is uh, represented by its avatar. And you can uh, move in different direction, evolve in the world. The audio is personalized, and uh, both uh, both user here on mobile and the uh, desktop are sharing the same environment, but it can scale to many different users. You can add your own custom assets. So I made this uh, model of this uh, small uh, house uh, toy, and uh, on this house I have some sensor. When I'm moving the house uh, in different orientation, it will update uh, the the model position in the virtual world at the same time. So to do this on my roof of this uh, real house, I have a Raspberry Pi, which ship uh, this sense art sensor with uh, the accelerometer, gyroscopic, and the magnetics, so I can know the direction, the angle to the north. So if I'm moving in a different uh, orientation, the angle will uh, slowly uh, change and slowly converge to the actual position to the north. So, if you want more details uh, about this experiment, uh, you can link, um, you can check this link, pearl.org/rzartwindowtwins, and your feedback is really valuable to me because this is uh, just uh, some uh, small step experiment I'm doing over the time, and uh, I want to make it uh, easy. So, your feedback uh, can be available. You can check previous demonstration and. Uh, also, the source code, uh, most of it is open source. And if you have any question, I am in the LGM meeting room. So you can uh, ask me on Matrix now or later online. Thanks for watching. Okay. <coughs> So I'm listening for a question. First, uh, while people are preparing their question, I want really to thank um, all the team in REN at uh, Active Design who set it up uh, this event online. I wish it was in REN, but uh, maybe next year, who knows? And uh, yeah, I hope everyone enjoys that video. Um, okay, what can, okay, no question here now in the, in the IRC. You can contact me any any time later on uh, uh, IRC, Mastodon, Twitter, or so. Um, and uh, yeah, I try to to share the many sample projects. So if you want to get started, the easiest way I can suggest is try to emulate the device first. Because if you don't have the device, you can start uh, uh, create application like with a fake device like mock mock sensor and so on. This is uh, the easiest way to get started. And once you get your VR application running, then you can try to substitute the simulator with a, an actual device. It's quite the same. You, you just need to, it's the same API and the same uh, the same web call will be the same. So yeah, try to, to separate problem and do uh, the start from the hand and then you can try to uh, substitute but there is no real order you can start uh, doing uh, iot stuff and then you can uh, 
uh, go to the um, full picture. So I have a question uh, from uh, Pygmy. He said that uh, this is very interesting. If compared to processing, which programming level will an artist have to test? Okay, uh, uh, first, I know about processing, but I never used it. I believe it's um, targeting for different uh, people from, from different mindset because I'm I'm not an artist. I'm, I've am i been enjoying doing some demos on uh, Amigas and so on, but um, I think I'm more, I'm more, I'm more uh, a software programmer. Uh, the programming level, I think there is something interesting if you are doing things in a web because JavaScript is really... Uh, popular language you, many people are using it uh, through framework nowadays but uh, the language itself is not that difficult and uh, I think it's interesting to start with uh, um, just stick to the basics of the language so in the browser you have a lot of API so I believe it's quite easy when I learned JavaScript I wasn't really uh, into um, low-level programming so I get uh, into it quite easily if we compare to Python, this is the same kind of uh, uh, levels to get into uh, into it. Okay, somebody, Luna, is uh, saying that it's always fun to watch uh, what other Mozillian are doing. Well, I'm not actually a Mozillian, I'm just contributing to the project and now I'm part of the reps program, but uh, I wasn't uh, involved into the design of the project. And he asked, uh, about uh, the Swedish translation. So yes, uh, uh, the, I think it was uh, maybe not the last, the latest release, but the one before some localization has been introduced. I've been asked to do the French translation and uh, somebody did before I started. So I hope this is the same for for the Swedish. Uh, I don't speak sp Swedish, but you, you can double check. And uh, if there is known, uh, you need to provide uh, this translation string. It should not be that difficult, but uh, it will not surprise that it's already there. Um, another question. Uh, what is a minimal stack to work with, uh, like a mock sensor in pure in browser JavaScript? Would you recommend a minimal stack without hardware except for the PC? Yes, that's what was I was uh, referring just before the question started. Um, well, in my case, I'm using a, a Node.js uh, application, which is just a, a server with a, a REST API. We are talking um, using a JSON schema. Um, you can run also on a different runtime, like IoTGS, which is a, a very similar to Node.js, but targeting a very low constraint device. But if you are working on a, on a PC, for instance, oh no, minimal tag hardware except for a PC. Yeah, good question. So. Um, when uh, I have, I've been working on a microcontroller, like, uh, let me take this board here. This is a STM32, um, which has a, an internet port that can be really convenient if you want to get access to the internet. Uh, so to the, no, not the internet, uh, the full internet, but the local network. So you can connect it to the Mozilla gateway, which is running on a Raspberry Pi. If you're not, uh, you can run the, the, the gateway software on the on the regular PC too, as there is a Docker container and a Debian package and RPM also. And um, so I know that the other device like Arduino or, or ESP32, uh, uh, 8266 and uh, 32 are quite popular so that you can get started with this for um, not a big investment. Uh, yeah, you can, um, and also maybe uh, I didn't, have them here, but um, you can also buy some smart outlet and uh, then you can replace the firmware with a custom one that is supporting the WebSync uh, REST API. So yeah, that's, you can get uh, a very nice uh, IoT device speaking uh, WebSync natively without too much effort. That's something I want to publish uh, maybe later to, uh, to avoid uh, to use uh, already community firmware like Tasmota or others. Uh, about other question, uh, uh, is a Web of Things API specification practical? Are Chrome and Firefox up the piece and the implementation much diverging? Uh, practical, easy to work with real application. So the Web of Things application um, 
is uh, mostly a, a protocol to have things uh, interoperable. That's not something uh, a user agent uh, like a browser, a web browser will directly use. This, this is not made for the browser. This is more most made to have a, a smooth integration using a SMES a web technology between different kind of device. So in my presentation, I spoke about the gateway, which is connecting all the things together and then providing a web API to uh, connect to the things. But as I said, uh, once it is uh, targeting the user, there is no much IoT here. It's only a graphical user interface. Um, things about the Web of Things are mostly as a, a language where things can talk together, not uh, directly a user. A user have to use a graphical UI to do the job to talk to the thing, not to the directly access to the thing. Unless if you want to make a curl script and uh, try to access uh, different resources of the thing, but it's not something made for uh, user browser, yeah. I hope I and I answered the question. Uh, I can handle more question. I think uh, I have a couple of minutes later. And um, yeah, if you want to get started, uh, I can suggest you first to join the the discourse um, forum from Mozilla about uh, IoT. Uh, this IoT project I call it's called the Mozilla IoT. I can share the link in the in the um, in the chat room. And uh, we are also chatting about uh, the project in the matrix room. It used to be on IRC before on Mozilla server, but it has been moved to uh, to matrix recently. So that can be convenient because you can see the, the log uh, when it's offline. Uh, somebody has one more question. We have still time. 31 minutes until the last talk of the day. Last talk? Or for next talk, maybe there is none after. So most of I uh, may, may, maybe all of what I shared uh, has been uh, published on GitHub. There is different projects, so try to um, identify which one, and you can find some issues there. That will be helpful because I have no idea about how usable is this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Last talk of the day because uh, just after this is a workshop. So ne next talk, there is a workshop and a lighting talk. Okay. So thanks everyone. I just hope uh, the stream went fine, and uh, I'm really happy uh, to have uh, this event to uh, talk here online. I hope it will be different, uh, but uh, yeah, that's the way the open source community is uh, reacting to um, all kind of hazard. And I hope everyone is uh, fine and uh, just take care about. Um, what you are doing and uh, keep it free. Thanks, everyone. Okay, I'm see. I'm telling you goodbye, and uh, you can find me on the chat room later today. I will stay here. Thanks, and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.